TV deals in football are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Broadcasters are willing to shill out billions of pounds to get your favourite teams on the telly every single week. Whilst this may be a good thing for the consumer, i.e. you and me, we get to watch our favourite teams on the telly every single week, it's not a great thing for the world of football in my opinion. The teams at the top who are really benefiting from these TV deals, such as teams at the top of the Premier League, La Liga or the Bundesliga, are getting richer and richer and richer. In my opinion, I see it making football a little bit more of a closed shop. You're not going to see the likes of Red Star Belgrade winning the Champions League again, are you? So in today's video, what I want to do is give a league that doesn't have a big TV deal, a big TV deal, and see what happens. In theory, all the money these clubs are going to be receiving every single season should put them on par with the Premier League. I've chosen the Belgian top flight, the Jupiler Pro League, and given every single one of the 18 clubs there a £100 million per season TV deal, which equates to £1.8 billion across the season for the entire league. This renews every single season, so they get topped up with £100 million every single year, which puts it on par with the Premier League TV deal, and actually ahead of TV deals for places like La Liga, or the Bundesliga. In theory, all of this money should make these clubs absolutely incredible and you'd like to think they'd get to at least one of the top three spots in European coefficient rankings. However, there is a good chance that a lot of these clubs will just waste the money on terrible players, big wages and overvalue the market. So as you can see, we've got the Jupiler Pro League loaded up right now, right at the start of this save file, 5th of July 2021. It's currently the ninth most reputable competition in Europe, behind places like the Russian Premier League and the Eredivisie E. So it's not the lowest ranked league in all of Europe, but it's certainly not right up there with the big boys just yet. If we look at places like Anderlecht, the current average wage is about £5,500 per week. But if we look towards the lower end of the spectrum in this division with a team like St Truden, the average wage is just one8 grand per week. Obviously, with a big 100 million pounds guaranteed every single season I'm pretty sure those wages are going to go up massively. So I've simulated a long way into the future we're going to stop off at different intervals along the way to see what's happened and see how the state of football is looking. Also just before we go into the future would love it if you guys could drop a like on today's video for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here we'd love to have you guys on board for plenty more videos just like this one. So we've come back 10 years into the future in 2030 I want to come back just now so we can see what real players are in this division before we get into the realms of regens but as you can see uh, there's been lots of different winners Club Bruges, Anderlecht, Ghent, Charleroi all winning this league in the past 10 years or so. Now if we go to the team detailed information we can look at some financial information here. Antwerp are currently the biggest spenders in this division spending £65 million per year on salaries which is pretty mental in terms of average weekly wages, that's up to nearly £20,000 per week in average wages. So we've seen a, well, if you call Anderlecht the baseline from what we looked at previously, that's a four times increase. Anderlecht themselves are in second on £56 million per week, currently spending at 16, basically £17,000 per week on wages. There isn't a huge transfer spend though, considering at this stage, 10 years in the future, they've been given each a billion pounds. Uh, only spending £35 million per season is shallow, or at least this season spending £35 million. Uh, that's the biggest we've seen so far, interestingly. The league has jumped up to 8th in the Jupiler Pro League, which is interesting. Um, it's not actually made that much of a leap at all, considering the amount of money we've pumped into this division so far. So actually, I'm a little bit disappointed from the results that we've seen. There are some interesting players in this division, though. Uh, Tony Martinez currently playing for Anderlecht. Uh, he's had an interesting career going from Porto on loan to Rims and actually only just joined Anderlecht, interestingly. Wilfred Notto, pretty sure he's a wonder kid in FM22. Uh, he's had an interesting career going from Zurich to Man City to Mainz to Troyes to Shakhtar to Man City to Venezia and now finally to Antwerp. In terms of average ratings, Agume has been the best player this past season uh, and he currently plays for Inter Milan in real life, I believe. Um, he does, but actually went to AC Milan in this safe and only recently to Genk. So by the looks of things, we're seeing some of these big names joining the division, but only very recently. It's taken a long time, despite all the money that these clubs have had, to bring in players like Agume or or Livkovic, who has been at the club for about five seasons or so since joining from Inter Milan. So potentially not quite what we wanted to see there in those first 10 years. Not a whole lot of great players joining the division, and if they have done, they've joined very recently. Only one place up in competition rankings, and I'm not even going to check the European competitions because I don't think any of them will have won anything because I think if they had done, the league would be a lot higher up in competition reputation rankings. So instead, let's jump to 2050, which is a good uh, 30 years since we started off this 
this experiment. And as you can see, the Jupiler Pro League has risen up to sixth in competition rankings, but was as high as fourth for quite some time ahead of potentially uh, the French League 1 uh, and the Bundesliga 2. Obviously at this stage it's regens everywhere so I don't think we need to look too deep into the regens. But the top scorer Felipe Alfonso, if we just have a quick look at his current ability which I presume is quite high looking at these attributes. If we look at his uh, attribute details, uh, only 159. That seems a little bit lower than what the attributes were suggesting to me. But if he's the top scorer in this division with 159 current ability it also does suggest that potentially uh, the league hasn't quite developed as much because if it had done I think there'll be a lot better better players in this division. Again, salaries have taken a big increase, as you can see, uh, almost £100 million spent per season by Club Bruges, which works out to £30,000 per week on average, which is still an awful lot lower than what you'd expect from the Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga. Despite 30 years in the future, every single club has had at least £3 billion pumped into them right now. It's also very interesting to see that Antwerp have barely increased their salary per year in the past 20 years since we were last here. Like, it's only gone up by what about three million or so the average wage is still hovering around twenty thousand pounds like it's that's surprising so has anyone actually won anything in european competitions uh, on the screen right now is the champions league finalists and i can't see a single belgian club anywhere in a champions league final since we started off this experiment uh, it's all been clubs you would normally expect to see there by munich's psg's liverpool's man city's chelsea's Man United's, but maybe not Man United, but Real Madrid's and Barcelona's, stuff like that, like they're all there. So what about the Europa League then? Have we seen any finalists? Well, actually, Ghent won it in 2043-44, beating Club Bruges in the final, as you can see. So that was an all-Belgian final, uh, and that is the... They're the, only, they're the only club since the start of this experiment to win a Europa League, which is interesting. So congratulations, Ghent, for that one. That must be why potentially having two Belgian clubs in the final got them up to fourth in coefficient rankings, which is interesting. If we look at Genk, you can see here, they lost to Roma in a final a couple seasons ago. So there have been Antwerp lost a final down here to Tottenham too. So there have been a few teams getting to finals of the Europa League. What about the Europa Conference League though? If we look down here, Antwerp won it in 2041-42. Congratulations. Beer shot. Looked like they are the first club I know Ghent won it in 2023-24, right down here. It's probably behind my head, actually, so maybe you can't see it. Uh, but Antwerp won it in 2041-42. Beer shot in 2037-38, which is very impressive. Anderlecht lost a final. Uh, Genk lost two finals. USG lost a final. Upen lost a final. So actually, been quite a few teams getting to finals of the Conference League. So we are slowly getting there, but a lot slower than I thought we would do. And actually, I think it's not unreasonable to expect a top Belgian team to be in the Europa Conference League final in real life currently right now. Like, I don't think this is anything special, these clubs winning it. Maybe the fact it was Beer Shot and Antwerp and USG and uh, Upen getting to finals, that's quite impressive. But, you know, a Ghent, an Anderlecht, a Club Bruges, I wouldn't expect them, I wouldn't be surprised, sorry, if they did actually get to a Conference League final in real life. So we've done 10 years in the future, another 20 years on top of that. Let's double it again and go 40 years into the future to the end of my simulations in 2090. At this stage, 70 years in the future, every single club has had 7 billion pumped into the club. Like if they're not number one, I'll be surprised. And so as I load it up, ha, ah, okay, they are number one. They've got to number one finally, but only just, like only in my last five years have they got to number one. And in, that was a big jump from fourth to first in one season, 2084 fourth, 2085 first. Like that's been a huge jump. So I think what we can conclude from this highly scientific experiment, that is if you give a division 1.8 billion pounds per year for, well, 2085, we've only got to number one, right? So if we call that um, 65 years, if I put the calculator on my other screen, it looks like I'm doing the mental maths myself and not using the calculator. If we give a division 1.2 trillion pounds in money, then they will get to number one in competition reputation rankings. But surprisingly, the, the salary per year is actually L low, really low, considering I was expecting it to be completely different. Antwerp, 107 million pounds. That equates to 34,000 pounds a week average wage. Like if we have a look at their senior squad, there is one player on 205,000 pounds, 170, 155. Okay, some of their top earners are on quite a lot. Maybe this is taken into account as well. 
the youth teams and that's why the average is so low but that's something I didn't really think about perhaps it would have been more useful to just look through this every single time but even then like there's only one two three four five six seven eight nine players on over a hundred thousand pounds per week all but two of the Liverpool senior squad are all on over a hundred thousand pounds per week so they are easily spending a lot more on wages right and my net transfer spend is is really low as well which is surprising. I'll be honest, I'd like to know what they've done with all the money, really. Um, they've had, each club's had seven billion, right? Seven billion. What have they done with it? It's not like they're spending it on wages. If we look at Antwerp, who look like they've been the best team, they've obviously spent it all on the facilities. Um, I imagine a new stadium as well, if we can find, oh, it's right there, stadium. 2045, 60,000 seats. I imagine they've spent a lot of money on that. But looking through their transfer history, like, I guess it is net spend we were looking at before. So they are spending big money, but selling a lot of big money as well. It's not like they are spending, okay, 234 million pounds there. That's a, that's a lot. That's an awful lot, but they sold £218 million as well. Looks like this was their biggest season where they spent £400 million? Let's try and find that season. Looks like 2065 or so. Ah, oh, I was absolutely spot on. 2065, £404 million spent on players. So this season, there was almost a £200 million uh, difference in the net transfer spend. But looking across this, a lot of the time, the net transfer spend is actually really quite small. So surely we've seen... So surely there should be some Belgian winners of the Champions League, but I, 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 there's not. There's genuinely not a winner of the Champions League from Belgium. Or a finalist. Oh, Club Bruges got there in 2080, lost the finals of Chelsea. But other than that, I mean, Porto got to a final before any Belgian clubs and we gave them no money. That has really shocked me. No Champions League winners from Belgium. And just the one finalist. That's that's ridiculous. So how have they got to number one then? Because I mean Genk have made or actually the past four seasons there have been Belgian runners up of the Europa League. Genk twice, St. Truden and Ghent. Genk runners up there. St. Truden won it, Antwerp have won it. So there've been quite a few winners of it. I say quite a few. There's not actually that many at all. Just those two. Antwerp and St. Truden, that's it. It literally goes Ghent in 2043, slash 44, and then you scroll up, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not missing anything. Oh, Club Bruges 2070, St. Truden 2080, one, slash two, and that's it, Antwerp as well. So four winners of the Europa Conference League, that's it. Plenty of runners up, we can see runners up all over the place, but that's that's really got me. And then the Europa Conference League, well, Courtright could win it recently. We've seen plenty of winners in this one before already. But, you know, clubs like Ljubljana, like that's pretty impressive for a team from Slovenia? Slovenia? Please tell me I'm right in Slovenia. Yeah, I'm right with Slovenia. Good knowledge, Tom. But again, like I said earlier, I don't really think the Europa Conference League winning that, particularly with the amount of money that Belgian clubs have, is actually that impressive. So... How have they got to number one? I mean, let's just look at the Champions League semi-finals for the past few years. So Antwerp, this current season, uh, non the season before that, non the season before that, non the season before that, non the season before that. I mean, St. Truden in 2083. Right. Club Bruges in the year they came runners-up, obviously. So I don't understand how they're number one. Although, of course, this is reputation, isn't it? So all of these clubs with their money have great reputation, potentially. If we have a look at uh, Europe and the club coefficients, they're second in club coefficients as well. I mean, a long way behind England. But even then, I don't, I'm surprised they're number two in club coefficients as well because well, no one's winning anything. This has got me a little bit spooked. I'm not entirely sure how they've got to number one in reputation rankings and number two in coefficient rankings, but but there we go. If you are a member of the Patreon, you can get all of these save files from the Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description to that one so you can download them and have a look around yourselves and let me know on the Discord, link down in the description to Discord, to uh, tell me why this has happened because I'm so confused. Either way, thank you very much for watching today's video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have done, make sure you drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe if you're new here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a lovely evening. Speak to you all soon. Goodbye.